Hello, my name is Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall look at the Spitfire Mark V's Pilot's Instrument Panel. As we work through the various instruments and switches, I shall give you extracts from the 1942 Air Ministry Manual and Pilot's Notes. In order to explain further, I will show you my relevant reworked colour AP diagrams to assist you. I hope you find this interesting. Mounted on the lower left of the instrument panel is the brake triple pressure gauge. This gauge shows the air pressure in the pneumatic system cylinders and also to each wheel brake. Compressed air from this system also supplies the guns. Here we have the elevator tab's position indicator. Its function is to show the elevator trim tab position. Here's a close-up view of the starboard elevator trimming tab, showing the actuator arm and fairing. Immediately above is the electrical undercarriage position indicator. It has two separate transparent windows on which the words up are marked on a red background and down on a green background. The words are illuminated according to the position of the undercarriage. At the top of the indicator is a roller blind that the pilot can draw over the indicator to prevent dazzle during night flying. Above the undercarriage indicator is the standard pilot's oxygen regulator unit. This unit was fitted in most wartime British aircraft. It shows the pilot how much oxygen was left in the tank and the flow rate. Here we have the Spitfire 5's flap control lever. It is controlled by the finger and would enable the pilot to control the split flaps. They had two positions only, up and fully down. Here's an AP diagram showing the control lever's airflow. We shall go into more detail regarding the flaps in another video. In the centre of the instrument panel, is the standard blind flying instrument panel. This panel comprised of the following. At the top left is the airspeed indicator, which records the airspeed by means of the air pressure on the PITO ASI head located under the port wing. Next, we have the artificial horizon, invaluable for blind or night flying. You will see the white aircraft representation at the centre of the instrument and a white line representing the moving horizon. This instrument offers the pilot a means of knowing his aircraft's attitude in flight. To the right is the rate of climb and descent indicator which gives the pilot a reading in feet per minute. Here we have the altimeter which shows the aircraft's altitude. The knob just below the instrument can be turned to adjust the sea level pressure reading. Given by radio to the pilot before landing at any airfield, it enables him to adjust the dial to match the altitude above the approaching airfield to ensure the aircraft's altitude is correct. Here we have the directional gyro, which gives the pilot the aircraft's heading. And lastly, we have the turn and bank indicator. It is used to aid the pilot in turning the aircraft correctly. The bottom needle shows the aircraft's rate of turn, to the left or right, whilst the top needle should be kept vertical to ensure the aircraft is making a correct turn without losing height. This panel was standard fitment in all British wartime aircraft. This is the lifting ring for the sunscreen. When the gun sight is used during the day and the background of the enemy target is very bright, a sunscreen can be slid behind the windscreen by pulling on this ring at the top of the instrument panel. Here is a look at the actual sunscreen. Notice the lifting ring is now up. The reflector gun sight Type 1 Mark II is used for sighting the guns and cannon and is mounted on a bracket above the instrument panel. A main switch and dimmer switch are fitted below the mounting bracket. The dimmer switch has three positions, 
marked off, night and day. To the right of the gun sight is the voltmeter. To the right of the voltmeter is a switch that controls a 12 volt generator which supplies an accumulator which in turn supplies the whole of the aircraft's electrical installation. A small adjustable flap on the starboard combing above the instrument panel is provided for ventilation of the cockpit. The flap is opened by using this ventilator control. The pilot would simply turn the knurled nut underneath the flap to open or close the vent. The engine instruments for the Spitfire 5 are all grouped on the right hand side of the instrument panel for ease of viewing and consist of the following. Here we have the engine speed indicator, the fuel pressure warning lamp, the boost pressure gauge, an oil pressure gauge, the oil inlet temperature gauge, and to the right a radiator outlet temperature gauge. Finally, a fuel contents gauge and push button is mounted at the bottom right of the instrument panel. The fuel contents gauge indicates the contents of the lower fuel tank, but only when the adjacent push button is pressed. On later Spitfire 5 aircraft, such as this, the starting magneto switch is not provided, but a booster coil push switch is fitted adjacent to the starter push button at the bottom of the instrument panel. At the bottom centre of the instrument panel are two cockpit light switches, which control the two floodlights mounted on either side of the cockpit. Moving up to the top left of the instrument panel is the navigation light switch, which is fitted next to the flap control lever at the upper left of the instrument panel. Finally, the ignition switches are located on the left hand bottom corner of the instrument panel. Well that's it for this video. I do hope you found our tour of the Spitfire 5's instrument panel interesting and please remember we have many more videos lined up for you covering many interesting aspects of the Spitfire Mark V. If you'd like to, please click the free subscribe button below and also like to get notifications when future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.